now I'm blind because of all of the gray hair I've had time. In the two years I've been in this position. But thank you so much for having us here today. There's so many different things I could say. Um, but there's one word that people really haven't talked about with what happens when train stations come. It's gentrification, which is really concerning to me. So when I came into office, I came into office in the middle of the pandemic. Central Falls was the heart of the community. We have about 22,000 residents, 70% Latinos, low income. Our community with the pandemic, Dr. Rojano Fernandez was here, who was, who was great helping us. But the reason why we were the heart of the community was because of the housing issues in Central Falls. So we don't have a homeless situation of people that are sleeping in the street, but we have a homeless situation of we have two and three families living in one apartment for different reasons. With this train station coming, rents have skyrocketed. They're like 1,800 to a three bedroom. In Central Falls, five years ago, 10 years ago, rents were 700,000. So, how can you have two families that are making minimum wage to afford a rent of 1,800? So, as much as I'm super excited about the train station and giving opportunities to our residents to be able to not travel on the train to get a better paying job. I have to focus on the residents of the city and making sure that we don't gentrify and we kick them out. So what I did was when I came into office, I had a housing summit. Three months after I came in, I had a housing summit on Zoom for the schools. We had about 200 people attend. We had landlords, we had Section 8 um, tenants, we had Section 8 landlords, we had the housing authority, we had the violence advocate, you, you name it, we had them on this call. Which gave me an understanding, and I have to give a shout out to Pat and United Way for hosting for sponsoring that event for us. Thank you. Um, so after listening to all of that, we, we came up with what the challenges were in Central Falls and what we had to do. Central Falls has a $20 million budget. We really don't have that space to do. It's a very, it's a square mile. It's very small. And it's probably one of the densest communities in our country. So what I did was I went around the city and I identified all of these properties that were closed that nobody was using and I reached out to the owners of those properties. I said to them, what do you do with this property? If you're not doing anything with the property, I said, the city's willing to buy it. If you don't want to sell it, we're taking you to court. <laughs> Which is what we did. And, then, and if you don't want to sell it, you and don't want to go to court, you have to give me a plan of what you're going to do with this property. Which is exactly what we've done. So thanks to the support of Rhode Island Housing and thanks to the support of the Commerce Office Secretary Fire, um, we've been able to get some funding. We've been able to purchase some properties and we're working with one thing with builders, so we're going to have two huge projects. Um, I couldn't even say Central Falls has a bad time. <laughs> but we're going to have two huge housing projects to add our community development. My focus is affordable housing, and as much as I'm all for economic development and getting more, more money into the city, I can't stop someone, a private investor, from coming into Central Falls and investing and charging me $200 a rent. But what I can do as well is focus on the affordable housing part of it so that everybody else can focus on whatever they want to do in the city and charge what they want so I can take care of the residents of the city. Uh, you know. We have um, many other projects happening, a lot of great projects. Um, these past two years have been pretty overwhelming. Those of you who know me know that I came in full force, and we've been able to get tons of funding to get a lot of projects running. Just looking forward to continuing working with Mayor Grefkin, the train station. This was a partnership that we did with him. You know, when the conversation started, I was not there. The treasurer who was here was the mayor, and I know they had conversations and they started the joint planning commission because we have different different zonings and different ordinances and we needed to work together to make sure that this train station was working for everybody. So with that, I'm sure we're gonna have questions later on, but thank you for this opportunity.